Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first installment of our coaching session here with White Rhino Financial and Rethink Wealth. I'm your host, Kevin Thompson, the investment specialist of Rethink Wealth and White Rhino Financial. Today, we have some exciting news for you guys. We are starting our coaching session, our coaching series on investing matters. Strategies toward long-term investment success. So, today we're gonna to talk about a few key points. Some steps you can take to put yourself in the path of long-term investment success in any type of financial climate. I'm your host, Kevin Thompson, investment specialist of White Rhino Financial and Rethink Wealth. My job is to help um, our clients understand what's going on in the financial markets at any given time. If you want to listen to our podcast, you can uh, go to whiterhinofinancial.com at www.whiterhinofinancial.com and find our podcast and educational sessions. You can also go to iTunes and put in White Rhino Financial to find those podcasts there or SoundCloud and put in, type in White Rhino Financial and find our podcast there as well. So let's begin. Reviewing some important lessons that we've learned from history. We'll discuss five strategies that you can adopt to be a successful investor. We'll also talk about some strategies that will help you during all, any kind of markets, no matter how volatile. Lessons learned from history. Whether you're just getting started as an investor or have years and years of experience, we can all benefit by reviewing some important lessons that history has taught us about financial markets. Avoid reacting to headlines. We are flooded on a daily basis with news, information, and media sources, including websites, blogs, social media, talk shows, news tickers, just to name a few. Choice overload can confuse you. In fact, studies show that too many choices can make it harder to make a decision. So keep this in mind. The mainstream news media reacts very quickly to short-term noise and real-time events. So what a news outlet reports on one day can be contradicted hours later. And markets tend to overreact to short-term noise as well. While it may be very unsettling, it's important for you to, as an investor to not let short-term market shocks affect your long-term investment goals. Market volatility. It can be concerning, but let's look at the path of long-term perspective. Volatility the big swings, the ups and downs in the market is just a natural part of investing. This graph illustrates the hypothetical growth of $10,000 invested in five different asset classes over a time period between 30, uh, December 31st, 1979 to December 31st of 2018. And I, meant, I said asset classes, I mean, I meant portfolios. So the chart shows a few things. One, Portfolios with greater allocation of stocks produce greater returns and higher ending wealth values than portfolios that were allocated more heavily to bonds. While equities have a high volatility over the short term, equities over the long term still outpace other financial instruments. Two, these higher returns are associated with greater risk or volatility. So you'll want a financial strategy that offers you the opportunity to invest in a broad array of investment options. Three, there are benefits to sticking to your long-term strategy during periods of volatility and market downturns. In fact, for many of our investors with long-term focus who are patient during market ups and downs, volatility also presents opportunity. Volatility soars when a major uncertainty occurs. But history shows that once the uncertainty is abated, stocks have risen and volatility has declined. So here's a case for optimism. 
So what do I mean when I say that market volatility breeds opportunity? This slide shows us some examples of companies that were able to find opportunity during prolonged downturns. Some of our, of our most recognized companies got started during downturns. Companies like GE, Hewlett Packard, FedEx, CNN, just to name a few. Apple is a good example of strong innovation during weak markets. The iPod was released on October 23rd, 2001, which was less than two months after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The iPad was announced in the midst of an economic hangover of 2010. Speaking of new technology, in 2008, Airbnb got its start. The company's website is for people who want to list, find, and rent lodging. Danger of trying to be a market timer. We get this every single day. Should I buy? Should I sell? I got this. I got that. Another lesson from history has taught us is that the pitfalls of being a market timer. Ideally, investors want to buy when prices are low and sell when prices are high. But history shows us that what actually happens is that investors have increased their holdings to stocks at market tops and sold when the prices hit near bottom. So trying to time the market can dramatically reduce overall returns. What do we mean by that? Here's a chart that shows how chasing performance by, trace, by trying to chase market returns can reduce your overall returns. The S&P 500 index delivered 7.2 average annual returns for 20 years ended in 2017. The Barclays Aggregate Index delivered 4.6% annual return over that same period. The actual return earned by the average equity investor over that same period was an average of 5.29%. So when you compare the return of the average equity investor against the S&P 500, there's a difference of 1.91% in returns. The average equity investor in this illustration is one who moved in and out of markets. And you can see that chasing the market can reduce overall returns. Well, you talk to us about chasing markets, market timing. Is cash a good place to be during turbulent markets? Many risk averse investors say that they prefer sticking to cash rather than investing in during volatile markets. Here's a question, is cash a good place to be in times of market turbulence? The answer is not a definitive yes or no, because every individual situation is different. And cash certainly may make sense as a part of your portfolio. But let's see in this next chart what happens to an investor who decides to stick to cash only? Let's look at this chart to see whether cash was in fact a good place to be over the past 20 years. We see that cash investments only returned 1.81% on an annualized basis over the last 20 years. In comparison, over the same time period, equities returned 7.20% and bonds return 4.6%. Here's another piece. What does inflation do to your returns? <laughs> Investors often look at returns without considering how inv inflation has reduced them over a, over a long-term time horizon. The average inflation rate over the past 20 years has been 2.15%. So let's see how the 2.15% inflation rate has actually affected returns. Keep in mind that whatever you invest in, inflation will reduce your real return. After accounting for inflation, which is like, like we just mentioned, 2.15%, what you are left with is the real after inflation return, indicated 
by the gray bar there. For cash equivalents over the last 20 years, the real return was 0.06%, which does not beat inflation. And again, you can see that over the long term, stocks have historically proven to be the best investment for outperforming inflation. Again, look at the returns. Equities, 7.2% of the last 20 years in and in 2017. The inflation adjusted return, 5.05% denoted by the green section there. We appreciate the time today. We talked about a little bit, we talked a little bit about behavioral aspects of this. Our next topic will be the five strategies for pursuing successful investing. That's coming very, very soon. Thank you for joining us and always remember to rethink wealth.